Look out, footy's back. Welcome to AFLW Today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, here to take you on an awesome journey as we dive into week eight, yet it's the ninth game that all the teams will be playing. It's all right, we've had a lot of footy. It's great, everyone's had a rest this week. Hopefully we're refreshed. Someone who might not be because... The next door neighbor's house was on fire last night. It's Bryony Dawson. Hello, hey. the house is on fire. How can we sleep when our birds are burning? Midnight oil <laughs> reference, <laughs> yes. And a guy who has more hair than Peter Garrett, Liam McCallion, oh, the that's, stats guy. That is not hard. I think it's everyone here actually does. And what's yeah. on your t-shirt today? Uh, what is this one? A Brisbane? Oh, Brisbane. It's the Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos. I was going to say Den- Brisbane Broncos. Denver yeah. Broncos. I don't really follow it, but I don't mind. Don't and you've given a nice iron this morning. Yeah, yeah. 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 Really. I'm, I'm always confident it for the uh, the iron. Was it in a pie? when you picked it up? It was hung up, but it probably was in a pile before it was yeah, hung up. Yeah, quick question. Do you do the washing or does No, I, I always do my, do my Or do your parents do? No, no, I always do my washing. Yeah, my Shout own. out to Karen yeah. McCallion, one of <laughs> life's, Thanks, yeah, life's great saints. Uh, on today's show, of course, the preview of week eight, ninth game everyone's playing. But my favourite Sydney Swan is joining the show later on. Yes. You miss out once again. because I know. Why do you interview everyone when I'm busy? I know. Yeah. It's more <laughs> Yeah, it's more like the club's like, we're free at this time. I'm like, yes, that's fine. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll take it. Tanya Kennedy joining the show. So myself Amazing. and Stats Guy will be interviewing Tanya. Hopefully she doesn't intimidate me because, well, as I said, she's on the list of players I don't want to mess with. And are you going to tell her that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah like. That's the opener, I think. <laughs> do you yeah. ask them my question to find out? Last we week did, we lo- did, yes. We did last week, so we're going to do it this week. We've also, not that anyone's going to care now, we threw it out on Instagram to see if the people want to ask questions. Yeah. If we get some cool ones, we'll throw them in. Great. Yeah. And if your question doesn't get on, just know that it wasn't cool enough. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty, pretty much. much. <laughs> Any question will do it pretty much. So if you want to catch up on the previous interviews that we have done, we've done multitude of them throughout the season. Check out our YouTube channel. If you're watching it already, you're already there. So go back to the previous episodes. All the links to the interviews are in the show notes. So if you click on the show, click more, it comes up when the interview comes up. So check that all out. Make sure you hit the notifications bell so anytime a video comes out, you get notified. Of course, follow us on all the podcast channels. It's basically just AFL Today. You find the men's show there. We did a three-hour trade wrap last night, and that was insane. Ooh. Kind of a waste of time, really, because nothing happened till 7 p.m. But <laughs> it anyway, was good fun. Yeah. Get, around the, lots of views. get around the social medias. People like me at the moment, so this is really nice. Check out our TikTok, AFLW Today. People are being really nice. That's the yeah. title of your tell-all memoir. People are being nice to me. People like yeah, me People at the like moment. me today. People Get like... around me, guys. Come on. Get around me. People liked me once. <laughs> once. Just once. Uh, and, of course, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Yep. Uh, it's just AFLW Today and follow the men's channels there as well. But can you smell it? Because footy's back. Footy's back. Let's go. Let's just start it. Tanya Kennedy right now. All right, AFLW today, big guest this week coming all the way from Sydney, and I'm putting it out there right now. My favourite Sydney swan oh, at the wow. moment. It's Tanya Kennedy joining the show. G'day, Tanya. G'day, oh, and thank you for the warm welcome. There we go. Well, yeah, I've I've been saying it all year, singing your praises, and we, we'll just get quickly into footy stuff before we have some fun. Uh, you've just come straight onto the swans list, and you haven't missed a game in two seasons. You must be loving life right about now. Oh, it's awesome. I'm still um I'm still taken back all the time. Like it's just happened so quick and I'm like, whoa. Second year in, I'm like loving it. Everything's just been awesome. Yeah. So, that is that is awesome. Yeah. So I'm gonna throw it throw the, the order out of the way here. So you debuted, the Swans won their first game finally. So we can say it was all you really. Yeah. It has to be. <laughs> There's some color. I suppose we all have a part to play, right? But <laughs> It was definitely a team effort, and I'm just lucky that I was a part of the team that time, absolutely. making history. Yeah, and, absolutely. So take us to that first win because your first ever game, you've only got on the list because of un- two unfortunate injuries to your teammates. Like that couple of weeks must have been a whirlwind. Mm. Oh, it was like it just happened so quick and like unfortunate for the injuries, obviously, but it was. I was so good for me. I just swept up the opportunity and to come in. I didn't know what they expect, what was going on. I'm like, whoa. And before you know it, you're in your first match and winning, beating Giants in the opening round. It was incredible. I still like remember the feeling, the buzz, the audience. Like everybody was just up and about. There's yeah, no awesome. better feeling there wasn't. Yeah. Did, did you know the song straight up for, for the first one? I know there's lots of uh, players that come over and have to learn the song. It takes a few games to uh, to learn it. <laughs> I did get tongue tied. I'm gonna be honest now. I did get tongue tied in like um one of the verses. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. It was no, you, wasn't too bad, no, but I knew most of it. But nice. 
If you're just making noise while everyone else is singing, just get excited. I, yeah. I think you're fine. Yeah, but, absolutely. A uh, bit of a backstory: you moved to Sydney 12 years ago playing Gaelic footy. Now I'm from Sydney and did not know there was Gaelic footy in Sydney. What's that <laughs> scene like, and what's that about? Well, then you don't um, venture out to Engelborn, no? Yeah, that's no. what's been played. <laughs> I don't venture that far, no. <laughs> Yeah, it's a massive, it's actually a massive setup here. Like, as you know, there's a lot of Irish here. Mm. So, um, yeah, we played out in Ingleburn every Sunday. Um, there's a big competition out there, Camogie, Hurling, Ga Football. Oh, so awesome. we all get together there, spread out throughout the day um, on a Sunday. So it's it's good. It's good vibes. And it's like... I'm- might have to go to Ingleburn for some hurling because I love watching hurling. Hurley, it's, it's, it's brutal. Wild. Yeah, that's, that's mm. scary. <laughs> but what, what from that? What made you? Because obviously you've moved out here. Because let's be honest, Ireland is very bleak and wet and cold in Sydney. Fair <laughs> enough, I get it. Um, what what made you choose like to come out and play like AFL? Is it just oh, I want to kick a footy around and tackle some people? Uh, I love sports. I've always yeah. loved sports. Like I've grown up playing soccer, Gaelic, and I was on the bit of the rougher side. So. Yeah. Nice. Watched this sport and then I was like, oh, that's a good sport, but still didn't have time because I was playing local Gaelic and yeah. soccer. I was like, I'm working. So I was like, mm, but I did want to try it. And then a few of my friends joined the team and they were like, come on, you'll love it. And I was like, ah, you know what? I'll give it a go. And yeah, I gave it a go and loved it. I was like, this is the sport for me. Mm. Yeah, it's just so fun. And, yeah. Tack- yeah, yeah. I was going to touch on the tackling. Obviously, you can't full on tackling and it's a bit, of, bit less physical contact in the Gaelic. Uh, what built you to get up to almost 10 tackles per game this year? And yeah, what do you love about tackling? And maybe how did you work on that side of your game to just get tackling involved? Yeah, well, I've always been really competitive. So like that just gave me the extra age to be like, hold on a minute. If the player's going to get away from me, I can just wrap them up really. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> so it's awesome. just like you go that extra second to just get them in a tackle and yeah, it's been working. So I'm like, yeah, it's working on my technique now. But yeah. at the start, it was just like wrap them up, big bear hug. That's yep. it. Like, that's pretty then... much it. Yeah, yeah, pin the arms. Yeah, perfect. Pretty simple. I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't want to get tackled by you. That's for sure. You see some of the hits you've laid this season. Uh, what's what was the pathway to the Swans? Because you said it was a real whirlwind. And just having a look, you're playing for the UTS bats. I won't hold that one against you. But what was the <laughs> pathway like to the Swans? It was yeah. It's a bit of like. So Colin O'Reardon, um, he would have been involved in the Clan the Gale. Yep. So he got me in as a train on in the Swans. So there was the list was full and he was like, come on as a train on. I was like, yeah, why not? I was reaching out to a few different teams at the time, like Melbourne um, and stuff. They moved down to Melbourne, go VFL. But yep. um, I came in and with the Swans and they were like, there might be a space opened up, there might not. Um, but hold your bet, like hold on, um, yep. just in case. And then yep. I just decided to hold on. I love the team, I love the environment. So I was like, yeah. And then the injuries happened, and they were like, yeah, there's a contract for you. So I uh, awesome. held on, and it worked out. Perfect. And you got an extension for this year. Is there any chats about an extension for 2025? Because as we said, you haven't missed a game yet since yeah. you started playing. Surely. <laughs> You never know, like yeah. that's like you're never too sure. You don't know. There's a lot of younger talent coming in, so like I am on the older age of things, <laughs> oh, but I'm that's no problem. I'm still still <laughs> <laughs> but you just don't know. Like I'm just happy. I'm taking like year by year. It's yep. been a complete turnaround the last year and a half. I'm like, whoa! I still like I'm here. Like I've, mm. it's it's awesome. So they have a next year contract. I'm happy enough, and then we'll see what happens yep. from that. I hope so anyway, because it's. Awesome. Yeah, that's that's a great way of looking at it. Yeah. I'll be starting a petition if not. Anyway. <laughs> um, obviously, it's been it's been a bit of a tough year for, for the team. A lot of injuries, a lot of a lot of close losses, and then stats guys a North Melbourne fan, but I don't think the uh, margin last week reflected how well you played. Like, what's the mood like right now at Swans mm. HQ leading into this weekend, which looks a very winnable game? Yeah. Well. Like, we did really well. The score definitely doesn't reflect on North Melbourne. Like, they're a great team. We knew that it was going to be a hard fight. So we were just like, bring the pressure, give it our best shot. You know, what have we got to lose? Like, play our footy and hopefully we'll get a good outcome. But obviously the result wasn't what we wanted. But there was a lot of positives out of the game. Like, they're a top team. Like, they've not lost the game. And for us to come in and even put up a fight against them was great. So there's a bit of mixed vibes. 
where they're like there's a lot of positives coming in coming out of that match coming out of the last three matches yep. Yep. so like and i think we're happy in a way that we've done what we've been working on and there's um trust in the process and like all the younger t- all the younger players um standing up so like there is a lot obviously it sucks to get the like to lose but there's a lot of positives no, absolutely, um, yeah. coming from it so we're going in pretty good vibes for this weekend, but you don't know Gold Coast is not like they've been unlucky like two, so they'll be wanting the win. Yeah. So two good teams like trying to get the win, I suppose. Mm-hmm. And you, you're back at Henson Park. Uh, yeah, you, this is all Alex does is talk up for half of our podcast about how good Henson Park is. I really want to go and watch a game there, so I, I'm very excited. Highest average attendance in the league yep. doesn't lie. Like, what's it like getting to Henson Park because you know that the, the Swans faithful does turn up. And they are going to bring the noise for you. Oh, the it's it gives you that extra buzz, that extra energy, that extra up and about. Like you, you look around. There's little kids there. They're all screaming your name. They're yeah, awesome. like, you know, um, sign. They're all like, go oh, Sydney. They're just so excited. Everybody's just up and about. And like, yeah, it's 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 like whoa. It's like class to see it. Like you look up and you're like, right, I'm doing it for them. <laughs> It kind of brings you like, oh, this is more than just us. It's like it brings you like to do it for others and like the club and the team. Like it's it's good. It's like amazing vibes. Yeah, that would feel so good, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah. It, now, we've, I, we took to our Instagram this morning like, all right, let's get some questions in. So first of all, who is the most annoying, a.k.a. who do you not want to sit next to on a plane trip? Yes. In our team? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I need to think pretty – um wisely about this one who's not going to give whoever i say <laughs> <laughs> yeah true yeah <laughs> who would be well i always sit beside giselle and i like sitting beside <laughs> her but it depends it depends what mood you're in if you want to chat or if you don't want to chat true true yeah so, like, are, it depends are you usually up for what... a chat though usually mm, before a big game not really on the way back yeah on the way to okay yeah relax that makes read sense. a book listen to something yep so, so- yeah Lexi. Oh, there we go. We got one. <laughs> Lexi Hamilton, there's the bus that you've been thrown under. Uh, with that, you said you rock that. So someone's asked, like, what's your pregame uh, playlist? Because I heard someone yesterday, I think it was from the Western Bulldogs, they rock Taylor Swift and Slipknot. What? That is a very... <laughs> Slipknot into Taylor Swift is not the duo I thought it would be. No. How does that even work? I know. You'd be up and then oh, you'd be down. You're in your emotions. You'd be screaming and, like, pulling your hair out. <laughs> That's a, the weirdest mix I've ever, I've yeah. ever come across, that's for sure. Yeah. Well, what are you rocking? Um, I do like a bit of Tay-Tay now. Yeah. I do. Nice. I like a bit of Ruth Menthol. Um, yeah, a bit of mix of everything, a bit of something with a bit of dance in it. Yeah. Perfect. But words. So like Taylor Swift or Kelly Clarkson and their mix of dance. Do you know? Oh, perfect. Yeah. yeah. Bit, of, bit of energy. Yeah, it can't go on yeah. there. Yeah, no. Don't mind that. Uh, now, it's been mentioned this week of a potential international rules. AFLW versus Irish AFLW. One, would you be up for it? And two, who would win if it was a straight AFL game or the Gaelic football rules? Oh, Gaelic's pretty obvious. Oh, I'm don't, I'm don't <laughs> stats guy. <laughs> I definitely would be up for it. I yes. think it would be a class game to watch. Like it would be. Plus, the Aussies, like the Australians, would never know what we're going to do because we're so unpredictable. So, they'd true, be like, what true. is going on here? Yeah. So, I think we'd win. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I'd honestly back, even if it was the AFL, the Irish girls would be so fast. I reckon yeah. it'd be awesome. I would too. I, I'm using my Irish passport here and I'm jumping nations. I'm getting on board. <laughs> team Ireland. You're, you're going Team Ireland? Team yeah. Ireland. All, all right. the way, mate. Very nice. Uh, and finally, this is the last one that I saw. Pre-game meal, what are you eating the morning of a game? Are we getting some carbs in or are you someone who doesn't like to eat because we've heard everyone's got their own sort of mm. weird and wonderful ways that they prepare for a game? <laughs> Uh, you have to eat. That's the main. I'm a massive eater all yeah. the time, especially before a game. Yeah. So I'm a bit of a weird one. Um, I like a few Weetabix on top of Special K and a handful of Nutri-Grain with some honey. <laughs> <laughs> what? That is everything. It's just like a smorgasbord. I like that. Three massive. bags of cereal. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> So that, yeah, you know, a bit of everything. It gives that like sugary taste, but not too much. And then you need. To I eat honestly lots, might but... try that. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to try. You it. still play it's in the back nice. pocket, guy? Yeah, I still play local footy. Maybe that will get me up in the ranks a little might bit. Might get better. you from seventh yeah, division. Yeah, yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, this has been great. We've had Tanya Kennedy on uh, Henson Park, three o five this Saturday afternoon. The Swans taking on the Gold Coast Suns. 
Tickets are 15 bucks if you're 18 or older. Just go hang on the hill and have a beer. It's going to be not? sick. Yeah, yeah it's going to be awesome vibes. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Shout out to the Sydney Swans for facilitating that. Tanya Kennedy. Legend. Quite possibly my favorite swan. So right, right now, so sorry, men's team, you're just in the bin at the moment after that performance on grand final day. Yeah, yeah. I reckon yeah. that's fair. Yeah. Tanf, good fun interview. If Tanya Kennedy was on the field on grand final day, probably would have had a better crack than most of the blokes. Absolutely correct, yeah. my friend. Spot on. All right, quick news. Uh, we have some news here. Uh, Gerald, I know I'm throwing you under the bus with this, but please put like the link or however you do it up in the video right now. Our video with the ASICs All-Stars is yes. up on our channel right now. Seven ASIC sponsored athletes spent a day with Stats Guy and myself. We were kicking footies, having a good time. So it was great. Bonnie too good in the time since that video was taken has done her knee and come back from it. Yeah. Gerald amazing. spent some time putting it together. It looks schmick. Yeah, it looks great. So what do we, what do we have? Emma Carney, Bonnie Too Good, Eliza McNamara, Abby Mackay, Jenna Bruton, Jasmine Garner, and I'm Keely Sharar. Bang! Jeez, you got them all. That's, wow, that's, that's not bad, mate. Well done. Yeah, I was surprised you remembered. What about a mem? What about the list of players as well? Yeah, like, I know like we had top, some absolute gun players. Top of on the there. top there. Yeah. 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 And you will see in the video that we may have taught Keely Sharar how to snap a footy. Well, Bonnie Too Good did. Bonnie Shannon, Too Good did. And absolutely. Then snapped got... the winning goal last week. Yes. Uh it has been talked about. So Sarah Rowe and uh, Sarah Hosking, Sarah Hosking yep. on Tagged, which is the AFLW podcast sponsored by the AFL on their website, talked about potential of the Irish AFLW versus AFLW. Now, I don't know if this is going to be an international rule style with the Gaelic footy, but they've talked about it yep. as international rules. So I'm like, just do it. Yeah. Don't the, think. The international do. rules back in the um, day was awesome. I don't know if the AFL doesn't think and just does. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah. I feel like this game would be now, are we talk, incredible. Are we, so many people would but, be watching But are we it. talking, we're playing a game of footy or playing a game of Gaelic footy? Gaelic footy. Yeah, I think international rules. So it's Gaelic, like how they used to the do Gaelic, with the men's. The Irish players would kick the living crap yeah, out that's of why international rules. Would. Yeah, it would they absolutely would. Like, yeah, international We'd rules. We'd get smashed. Actually, I'm Irish. Smashed. You'd get smashed. You're not Irish. Yeah. You're Irish when you want to be. I've got, a yeah. I've, got a, I've got a passport and I'm a citizen. I can vote. All right. All right. Okay. <laughs> but, yeah, but there's 37 Irish players in the league, so yeah. that's a lot more than the men's. They, he can easily have a big squad of, for international rules. or an a, It could even be an AFL match and it'd be fun to watch. Idea. Yeah. Gather around. Yep. Yeah, that's Saturday, that was, 1 o'clock, Adelaide Oval. That was the original plan. AFLW yeah. versus Irish AFLW, straight up AFL game. Bring yeah, it that, on. That'd be cool as well. Because yeah. the, the Irish players would just run them off their legs. Probably. It'd be sick. <laughs> I think if you're going to do it Irish yeah. versus it should Australian, be international rules it should be yeah. international but rules or Gaelic rules. But, but, it's not but, then, a, but then why? It's because we're, <laughs> it, but we're, why? they're already playing AFL. It's not like where we played the Gaelic in the men's side, we played the Gaelic footy against the Gaelic players. They are playing footy week in, week out. So it's not like, oh, you have to learn a new game. They know the game. Mm. So if it, if it was international rules, I'd be like, all right, let's take on the the. Uh, the all the all Irish team that gets picked at the end of the Gaelic season. I was like, no, let's 37 players. Well, there's your squad. Let's just do both. Yeah. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's do da, two, two games. Forget a lot of All three. Gaelic international rules are uh, Aussie rules, and you just have a three match series. Mm. I, don't, I think that's probably I'm back in the far. Irish 3 0 straight up. <laughs> <laughs> the Irish players all together on one team would be so fun. Oh, the, the pace. Awesome. I don't know about the. Uh, the defense, but the running for off half yeah. back, like running forward, would be awesome. Tanya Kennedy, you're my starting rover. Yeah, Done. just start tackling people. Gilroy up front, uh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want it now. Honestly, it's not that hard. Like I know we're trying to build. Maybe we can tag that into how many people we need to watch the game throughout the year. Because if you get thirty to forty thousand watching it, just bump something. It would work. Well, around mm -hmm. because people are already everyone's just there for footy. And yeah. Just more footy would be. Yeah. Cool. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, Richmond have released their Dreamtime Guernsey uh, stats guy. Please send Gerald the photo so we can pop it up right now. Yes. Uh, that's released because Richmond and Essendon are playing each other in Darwin mm. for the Dreamtime game, which is pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. Love the Dreamtime games. And, yeah, the Guernseys look good. Yeah, they looks do. Looks really nice. Got a big uh, lizard and turtle across the sash. Just looks so awesome. Yeah. Essendon should come out next week. So Essendon will obviously have their home kit. <laughs> They'll have the predominantly black with the red strip. So we'll see what their kit is coming next week, I assume. Anyway, let's rip into some game previews because uh, we had some good waffle there. Thursday night, so tonight, Carlton take on the Western Bulldogs at Icon Park. This is at 7.15. Carlton last won this matchup. It was round six, 2023, 53-34. Carlton, Abby McKay, 50 games. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. Carlton's youngest player to reach 50 games and the first father-daughter to play 50 games. Yeah, first father-daughter in AFL W history. Oh, that's awesome. Which really surprised me because yeah. there's a 
There's been a few to reach 50 now, but the yeah. first father daughter, which is pretty cool. Great. Yeah. I'll use that information in my interview with her pre game. Hey, there we go. Well, tonight. <laughs> she got roasted on TikTok and Instagram this morning by her teammates because right. she speaks in just a monotone voice. She's got a very, like, very, very flat, chill. but it's, but you, it's very we relaxing. Met her. I, voice. Don't, I, don't know. I don't remember yeah. that. It was very yeah. relaxing when she was talking. It's like, I could listen to you talk all day. Yeah. Great. There you go. Yeah. There there you say, oh, your teammates had fun with you. What do you reckon about that? Yeah, yeah. 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 up. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a game Carlton should be winning, shouldn't it? Yeah. A hundred percent, they should be winning. They should absolutely step up, especially um, their midfield. It, it's it's going to be really interesting. Like you know, after the Bulldogs copped all that criticism mm. for for stacking their defence last I don't week. Try well, uh, I think that in in the public eye, they they'll say. Uh, when we're not listening to the critics, we're mm. playing our own game style. In the back of their but, minds, maybe. Um, Imagine if they start running and gunning from the first right. bounce. <laughs> well, what the hell, man? <laughs> Come on, Tim. I reckon the way that they can win, like they, they kept it close against the Bombers. I know it was scrappy, but they kept it close against the Bombers. I think Carlton are another uh, rung below the Bombers. So they'll be like, mm, if we just keep it really scrappy again, Maybe we can stay in this. And I reckon they're going to do the same oh, thing, which is annoying God. for us to watch. Annoying for you because you'll be there. <laughs> You're going to be but there. I, I yeah. genuinely yeah. reckon that that's going to happen. And yeah, that's going to be a bit annoying. Uh, I don't want that. We so, don't need that. We don't know, but um, that's what I'm just calling. Yeah. So the dogs can have a decent attacking game, but they just can't get their hands on the ball. Mm. They've, they've got the lowest average contested possession yes. per game, which is 97. That's what happens when you sit three behind the footy. Yep. Yeah. And they give up on average 54.9 marks per game, which is the worst That's a lot. Yeah, um, yeah. in the comp. So Carlton's forwards need to step up here because if it's going to be scrap in defensive, they have the height there to take yep. advantage. There's no Lauren Aaron's back there. They just need to get better with their inside 50s, I've written here. Like the, there's a, a lot few of time dumb kicks. When they get their goals, like Girard obviously got the other one, they're sort of all their midfielders are streaming forward or their pace, but yep. they're not hitting that target they inside can't. 50 or no. taking big marks, which is what a lot of the teams outside the eight are doing. They just need to take some marks, get a, a clear, yeah, clear inside 50 rather than just one that's just hitting the ground or going really wayward and going out of bounds. So yep. They just need to or, hit some inside 50s. Or getting your your mids to push up and start getting yeah. on the scoreboard yeah. as well. So, yeah, um, yeah, but exciting to see Abby McKay playing her 50th tonight too. Absolutely. Answer the big question, do the dogs make this gross and scrappy? I chucked uh, that in there. I reckon they might. That guy's a hater. No, I'm not saying a hater. I'm just saying what's gonna, I think is going to happen. I just think they will because that's the only way they can win. I don't think they can win. I actually think there might be – it's either they or actually try to run and gun and or, it's very open, or they yeah. just stick to their guns and go, screw you, But, like, you, if it's a run and gun game, the Blues could smash them. If they could, absolutely. That's right. But, so, but isn't it could. better to play a better game? To try and win, and, yeah, you know true. What I mean? true. Like, Do you reckon there's any point where – Someone's picking up the phone. Oh, I think from AFLW yeah. like headquarters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is AFLW headquarters. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Can I please speak to the Bulldogs coach? The Bulldogs yeah. coach oh. and the president. You're calling up Tam. Oh no, I'm calling up Tam <laughs> and going, listen, mate, we're trying to hit these numbers. Yep. We're, for the for the good of the game. Just play a bit more exciting. Can you just, <laughs> mate, just maybe only put seven back in defense <laughs> yeah, <laughs> instead seven, seven of like more. twelve. You know what I mean? <laughs> If True. this wasn't a club that had Luke Beveridge in there, that just he's sticks... got nothing to do with yeah. this. You just <laughs> hate, he hates the men's Bulldogs team. He's got yeah, nothing to do. Yeah, but do you not that. think that just like there's a stubbornness and just like nah. To be fair, we're getting towards the end of the season. The other way of looking at it is the dogs are like, all right, we got nothing to lose. Surely we got to. You've change won it up. Yeah. two more games yeah. than everyone expected you to win. Yep. I know, I know I'm being rude to dogs fans, but honest, I'm just so off last week. Yep. Mm. Fair enough. If you don't kick a goal, I'm going to come like all guns blazing <laughs> on Monday. Okay, great. Yeah. Can't win this by three goals. Dear God, just let this let seven goals be scored in this game. Yeah, I hope there's a few goals scored. I'm going Carlton by 20 points. 20 yep. points, don't mind that. I'll go Blues by two goals. I think it's going to be scrappy, but they get it. Friday night, Albertson Oval, St Kilda travel to take on Port Adelaide. These two teams played in round three last year. In a very high-scoring game, Port Adelaide won 56 to 46. It's been a weird season for both teams. Where Julia Teekle is now out for three weeks, three yeah. to four oh, weeks for really? Port Adelaide. Yeah, she's yep. forgot about that. She's oh. out. Which yes. is not great. That's not helping my tip. But Schultze, we found we found a backup forward there. I Don't know. we love yeah. Schultze? She just goes up for big yeah. marks every time. Also, yeah. to the knob that commented on our TikTok going, oh, it was just a generalized pack muck. 
you try and jump three foot above everyone. Yeah. Bet you couldn't do it. What did you say? It was a generalised like, pattern. She was on the yeah. back of a generalised back. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Gerald. No, I'm yeah, not taking his job so no, hard. I know. That's allowed. I know. That's allowed. You can blur it out. Yeah. You can yeah. blur it we'll out, We'll never Gerald. know what it is. Hey, put your time code into that, mate. So, yeah. So, and then you look at the St Kilda point of view. Jesse Wardlaw's kicked six goals in the last two weeks, so putting a big effort into stopping her influence yep. on the game is the key for Port Adelaide here. So... Then you look at it in the midfields for St Kilda. You've you've got Tiana Smith running off a wing, and yep. if she gets some space, which oh, you can find at Albertson, thank you, goals. look out. But then Dowrick, Horton, O'Day for St Kilda uh, for Port Adelaide. Sorry, this is going to be a good. Game. I chucked in Ebony O'Day just because the, I know Bryony really likes her as yeah. well. Yeah. The, goes so hard at it, like like. I don't, what's that old saying? Hard as a cat's head, they always always say. Hard as a cat's isn't, head. Isn't that the old saying? Isn't that the old saying? I think tough it's as a cat's head. Very old, mate. Yeah, I don't something think like that. I don't think before I've ever my said time. It. Yeah, maybe. Is that something your parents say around no, the house? No, I just heard <laughs> people say that on commentary. I don't know. <laughs> maybe <laughs> just no as, as hard as a concrete block, like something like that. But yeah, O'Day is so concrete. good going at the footy. She's so I, good. I really, really like watching her play. So put this that, will put her in there. this will be a, a really interesting one because Port are slow starters, mm -hmm. and yes. the Saints tend to run out of steam at the end of their game. So I think there yeah. could be a, a massive momentum shift throughout the game. Yep. Um, as you said, interesting to see who goes to Jesse Wardlaw. Um, she's like their only option at the moment. Yeah, so they look elsewhere a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they really need to find some other options that will step up because they do they do suffer a little bit under a solid defensive structure. But yep. the same thing as what we've said with Carlton, if you can get some of your mids to push down and try and get on the board, um, I think Saints will Saints will take it up to them. Yeah. Uh, but Port, they're just too strong. They just go too hard at it, yeah. and they're they're and at home. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be Port by close, but by six points. I need more Ooh. out. Of, I need more out of our uh, Ella friend. Yeah, Ella friend. yeah, needs to do more. Hasn't done enough Just for me this season. Yeah. yeah, that's fair enough. Are the Saints as well? They've only scored more than twenty three points once in the last five games, and I think that was last week. I think a lot of those twenty or that so was twice. Points, or twice is it? Yeah, when they won the, when they won the game midweek, and then when oh they, maybe um, I missed one of the midweek. Yeah. Games, yeah. but. Yeah, I think a lot of those points, as Bryony pointed out, is like first half. They're like 20 points, like three quick goals, maybe even in the first quarter. Yeah. So this is and then also, they crumble in the second We haven't quarter. mentioned how big this game is for finals. Yeah. That's why I've chucked in the big Both teams are four and four. 110% mm. for St Kilda, 106 for Port Adelaide. So the winner of this jump will be eighth. Yeah. Yeah, I, I put in the big question. Do either or both of these teams make finals? Uh, I think Port will and I mean, Saints might not. What's the draw? That's what I need yeah. to know. What's I haven't looked at the, the draw, but like just in terms of... St Kilda have got the are. dogs and the Lions, so they have to win this one because you yeah. think they'll beat the dogs. Yeah. And then Port, Ad Lions, yeah. Port Adelaide have Gold Coast. Oh, yeah, Port Adelaide. If Port Adelaide win this, they play finals because they got Gold yeah. Coast and GWS to finish the season. Okay, so they, they could win the last three games. This yeah. So the big question is, must win for St Kilda? Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. But when you think about both teams, I just feel like Port have had... Such a better season than St Kilda. Yeah, even though they're lower, but like, yeah, they're still they're they're like consistent. on par yeah. at the moment. Similar percentages. I'm like, I feel like Port. I think because Port are so improved mm. than what they were last season. Yep. Um, yeah, I think they'll win this, and I think they'll make finals. Nice. Bang. Yeah, uh, Port by fourteen points. I'm gonna go Port by goal. Why not? Yeah. Cool. Saturday, Hawthorne, GWS, Kinetic Stadium at 1.05 p.m. How the hell did GWS beat Port Adelaide last time these two met? It was in round 20. It was in 2022, sorry. Uh, GWS beat Hawthorne, you mean? Not yeah. Port Adelaide. Yeah. I'm losing my mind. At the moment. <laughs> That's all right. It's okay, mate. You That's got, all we're here you for. Here. I hardly for. slept last night. Like my, if you watch the <laughs> AFL live stream last night, my back, was, my back is cooked. <laughs> yeah. My, my we just go back. back to our side of the table. And yeah. Like, where, where my, a couple of Panadol, mate. Yeah. I've Panadol stretching. Like, yeah, <laughs> not good. If anyone's got any sciatica, like ways to help that pain, hit me up. You've got to get, get your piriformis. You've got to stretch that out. Yeah, I have been. That's yeah. the problem. Okay. Anyway, Stats Guy, take this away because we love watching Hawthorne. They're oh, second on the ladder. Yeah, they're second on the ladder. Second best offense in the comp, only mm -hmm. behind uh, North. North. Double their offensive last season as well. I had a look. I think last season they were only averaging around 30 points. This season it's 59 points. So yeah. what we absolutely want. awesome. They've got so much speed across the ground. Like that's that's why they're winning games. You look like, oh, the, the other team's sort of getting a few inside 50s. Then the Hawks will go, oh, we're just going to counterattack you every single time and use our speed. And they're just so fun to watch. I just yeah. love watching the Hawks. I think... Hawks will absolutely demolish GWS oh. on the weekend. Yeah. I'll be there on the boundary in Frankston. You're just around like this way. I'm the, I'm the, yeah. the Dublin. Yeah. Um, Dublin. Yeah, and it's just around the corner from my house. I'll probably, work, I'll probably walk there. How nice is that? 
Give us a wave if yeah. you see me down there. Uh, no, uh, no Greta Bodie for Hawthorne as well. Oh. I don't think I don't think that's going to stop them. No. at all. Um, that's a, yeah, big other. They're so, as you said, they're so quick. Mm-hmm. They play really free flowing end to end footy. The Giants are not known for their speed. No. Um, and I think that they'll be suffering more than the Hawks from fatigue from the last four weeks. Um, you've still got Batesy, Anya McDonough, Gilroy, Jazz Fleming. I mean, so the list like just goes on. It's deep. Mm. They're superstars. They're gelling really well <laughs> together. I think the only way GWS are even going to get a look in at all uh, is they try and shut down that part of the Hawks game. Yep. Um, you know, don't go full Tam Hyatt style, but give it <laughs> – um, just be stronger in the contest. I think that's where their focus yep. is and shut down some of that Hawks ball movement yeah. out of the stoppage with, that we know that they love to do. So well, Stopping that that first handball receive yeah. and locking them – like being able to tackling pressure. Yeah, Stopping massive. that and locking them down they is had the key. The first few games I reckon the Giants were okay with the tackling pressure and then they've dropped off like their defense because they're, they're more of an attacking team even though they yeah. haven't got enough attacking options, which is yeah. really hard to say. But – um, yeah, it's, I think they're going to struggle. Yeah, and I, I think it's yeah, it's a it's a fitness thing as well. And when mm. you're not when you're not up there after a four week condensed season, I think that they're really going to struggle. And I think that the Hawks are just going from strength to strength. Big question: If the Hawks keep this up, can they win the flag? I, I think we had this. So I put it in again a couple of weeks ago. We had this question, and everyone's like, "Oh no!" But they keep getting better. The Hawks. So I'm like, are they a chance? What are they? Who have they got? Um, Last after, couple of weeks, I'll yeah. check it. Let's have a quick look. So yeah. they go to the D's and then a Richmond. Oh, okay. So they. Oh, that's I mean, tough. Actually, yeah, they could if have. They two finish losses. the season one. Richmond's not tough for Hawks. <sighs> well, you don't reckon? No. Nah. Oh, I reckon Richmond. I reckon beat Richmond. Them. What? Yeah. Let's save that for that week. Yeah. Show. Well, so, so, but I, uh, yeah, anyway, if they finish the season with what ten and one, mm. how do you not believe in them? Maybe they've had it. With their one loss being to Adelaide. Yeah. Mm. I still, I think North, I just North think to benchmark, yeah. Brisbane, and then maybe Hawks because Adelaide yeah. have had, been a bit up and down. Yeah, yeah they have. I'm, waiting, the fact I'm that, waiting for Adelaide to the click. The fact that the Hawks. Is, uh, you're waiting for Adelaide to click. Well, they yeah. clicked, They had 92 points last year. But it was, it was GW, it was GWS. Yeah. I reckon they, they they had slumpy, slumpy McSlump stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, have, they have. Okay. Anyway, Hawthorne will win this by 63 points. Woo! 63. I've got 57. Oh, I'm going lower. I'll go 50 on the dot. <laughs> I'll usually go bigger than guys, but we'll go Henson 50. Park. Big vibes. Big vibes on the hill at Henson. The Swans <laughs> taking on Gold Coast. Yeah. Henson Park. I know. It's quite Highest okay. average attendance in the AFLW. You're amazing. I love that. That was the most energy you had of any guy. Yeah. The dog with a bone. <laughs> Hens- <laughs> Hens- <laughs> Henson Park. Let's do it. Get Henson to Park. Henson Park. Have go hang teams. out with previous guest Polly. Yep. Polly will be on the hill having a good time. If you're a Swans fan, go hang out, yep. watch the footy, get rambunctious, enjoy yourself. Rambunctious, yes. yes. Excellent use of the word yeah. rambunctious. It's Thank actually you. underused. It is, word. definitely. Yeah. I was talking to Polly should... yesterday and she's like, I hate when I go to the W games. People, like, she's like, I love going. The people are there having a good time watching the footage. Like, I'm getting into it and going, oh, my God, why are you doing this? She's like, I need people to yell with. Yeah, great. Honestly, fair. So if you want to yell at the footy, hang out with Paul. Yell yeah. with Polly. Yeah, nice. exactly. Uh, Swans won this last game by 17 points, which was in a final last year, and the Swans did that without Beck Privatelli or Ali Morfitt. The fact that both these teams were in finals last year and now they are where they're at. Obviously, Swans We had... expected the Swans slide, to be fair. Not that big. Anyway, and then Gold Coast being last, that, oh, yeah, that still rattles my Didn't brain. see the Gold Coast last, but now that, when you consider the Swans are without Laura Gardner, Morfitt, Chloe Malay. Doesn't no, help. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. Definitely doesn't help. And potentially Montana Ham. We haven't seen teams. Obviously, we're doing this Thursday morning, but she did spend the last 20 minutes on the bench against North Melbourne. So she, I reckon they might yeah, rest her in either way. So Yeah. Mm. Nothing out of the Ham camp no, yet. No, no, no. But I, yeah, haven't Why bumped, haven't bumped into Montana <laughs> Ham's mum again, so I can't, I can't get anything. And I, you know what? I doubt she'd tell me mm. because the Swans don't do leaks. She did. She did do a uh, message to the. No, that's Ali Morfitt's mum. Morfitt's mum, actually. Morfitt's shout out to, shout Hello to, to Mama Morfitt. Mama Morfitt. <laughs> yeah. As as great as, supporters as she of knows, the show. Wagga people, especially Swans fans from Wagga, are the best people. Yep. Mm. Apparently. So yeah. good, you say it twice. Yeah. Wagga Wagga. Well done. <laughs> we just say it once. So this will be interesting because if if Montana Ham does play head to head with Charlie Robot, that's a good two, one. Two number That'll one draft fun. picks. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I did True Bloods on Monday night, and we previewed this game, and I said I think Tanya Kennedy goes to Lucy Single mm. and not Charlie Robot because Charlie Robot, she's probably the most 
powerful midfielder it's a bit harder to stop in the competition. Tag, yeah, I yeah. agree with that. Yeah. Whereas if because if she gets the hands of the footy first, usually goes to single. <clears throat> if you stop single, you stop the run. Yeah. So that's my theory on that. I think that's the way to to stop Gold Coast. We know Gold Coast don't have a defense at the moment. The well, def- last week they actually, I know it was Brisbane still have got 44 points. they got an points. attack either? Well, last week they, mm. well, they have at least one player in attack, Bahana. Yeah. Six goals last five games. Yeah, He's yeah, been really yeah. good. But then they were really good against Brisbane last week, which really surprised me. They were, they were in the game, That's 44 it. to 28. Yeah. And yeah, but this is, they but this really is thing. Me. Brisbane have been playing with their food a little bit, a Q clash as well, where it's like, yeah. of course, they're going to bump up and still you know, get really everyone going. That they, got it, they got that close. Yeah. And I think that both teams are coming off losses last week, but they actually showed a little bit of fight. The same with Sydney. So this could potentially be a decent game yeah. from a couple of the, the lower sides. It could be. We do think Montana Ham might not uh, be playing. I'm, I'm going with the assumption she's not playing. But the Swans home games this year, so not the game at Coffs Harbour, but not, they scored 50 points, 43 points, 41 points in their home game. So mm-hmm. they're scoring above their average yep. when they play <clears throat> North Sydney or at Henson Park. So yep. they can get a score like that, whereas Gold Coast, as we know, are susceptible when the ball hits the deck and out the back. Yep. So this is why I'd love to see Beck Privatelli get up the ground for yep. the Swans and then turn Place and go. Yeah. And then you have your runners just running back into open space because yep. I think the Swans can do them for leg speed. I don't they, like that. <clears throat> they, they can. We know they like to play that fast flowing footy as well. Yeah. Um, but I just think the the way they've been since they've had all those injuries, it can look a little rushed. It can look a little yeah. bit sloppy and that's where the mistakes are made. And I think that's where Gold Coast can sort of capitalize on that. If that is going to still be their game plan and how they're going to run. Yeah. If, if the Swans bring their effort from North last week, but add finishing, they will kill Gold Coast. I'm sure they would love to add finishing. Do yeah. they have finishing? I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't finishes, help when, yeah. you've got, when you've got the defensive pressure of North Melbourne yeah. and then you're comparing it to this Gold Coast team as well. Yeah. yeah. Like that 60 points was not reflective on the game if mm. you've watched it. 30 to 40 would have been more fair. That 60 points was not reflect 60. Yeah. Okay. I know what you're saying. I, a, probably, North <laughs> Melbourne honestly could not miss. They were pulling goals out of their backside. They had, they also had, 14, four, three, they yeah. had four from the top of the square as well. Like mm-hmm. It's just where good play got them out. Whereas yeah. the Swans at one point, I think they had four, they laid 14 tackles to one inside 50. So the ball's in their 50. For yeah. We don't need to lay tackles inside 50 when we're kicking snags. That's just, no, but what I mean is the ball's there. <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. I know that. And, oh, I do agree that the Swans were actually better we're than We're razzing you, mate. Yeah. Yeah. We're razzing. Yeah. Swans by 33. Oh. I'm up. Confident. Wow. 43. I love that. Gold Coast. Gold 43 Coast, or 33? 33. Oh, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, yeah. <laughs> Gold Coast flat off the big effort against Brisbane. Sydney up and about for one of their last home games of the year in prime time. Okay. I actually like that. And Scotty Go Swans with the attacking game that he loves to play. Ooh. I love that. I've got Gold Coast Bay Tree. Yes, I'm going Gold Coast as well. <laughs> I put in the big question that Alex didn't even want to read out. Oh, I actually didn't. So I didn't. I didn't go. It's about the sun. I said, "Is this the Suns' best chance to get a win this season?" I think it is. You got Swans with lots of injuries. Gold Coast are up and about from last week. They actually put up a strong. Yeah, Gold effort. Coast. If they don't win this, they're not winning a game. That's my point. I think they got Porton North. This is their only chance. They got a chance. Sorry, only chance for a win this season. I'm just going to tip them by one. Why not? It's going to be one, real, one point. One it's going to be like a draw. And then yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that well, sounds about one. Why not? I'm going to tip him. We're going to tip him once this year. So. Are you disappointed in us, Alex? No, because yeah. I know you're doing it to, to no, no, stick me no, out. No, genuinely, I think the Suns will win. I genuinely think the oh, Suns no, will win. No, I, I genuinely <laughs> am doing Bahana's it to Razzie. Gonna kick yes. <laughs> <laughs> Bahana's going to kick three goals and they'll be up and about. Alice Hamilton just... And I'll get give, into my big call Alice Hamilton, just give her a bath. Yeah, go yeah. on. Go on. <laughs> Alice Mitchell, sorry, not Alice Hamilton. There's a lot of Hamiltons. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot, lot of ha- ham. A ham. lot of Hamilton. A lot of Hamilton. Do you think about Ham when you see, the, like, when you have the Especially name Ham? What, I do. Not, not Hamilton, now but definitely I, Montana Ham. Now that I keep yelling about it as well, yeah, I go, I'm really ham. Hungry. <laughs> yeah. I see the cartoon version of, like, a leg Ham. I, like kind yeah. of like you like I always think of the, the um Toy Story character Ham. What was he? Is he? What was his name? The the pig. I was pretty sure his name's Ham. Or oh something. yeah, that, that scene guy, yeah. is just all sorts of wrong stuff. Go, you're on that? your island. On your <laughs> yeah, island. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure that was his name. I'll we love you. we love you, Montana Ham. Montana's <laughs> Ham's mum is a lovely person too. <laughs> Anyway, Casey Fields, Melbourne take on Richmond, 505. Why can't this game be in the city? Everybody's favourite ground, Casey oh, Fields. No one wants to go there. Game of the weekend <laughs> is in Cranbourne. Yeah. Oh, well, there will be, there'll still will be a Where's few the cranny, there. granny? <laughs> anyway, no, <anyone? laughs> uh, the D's won the last matchup by 16 between these two points. Both teams are flying. Well, yeah. Richmond yes. more so, like consistent yeah. season, but Demons have... What have they won now? Three, two in a three? week. Or they two, won two in a week. Yeah, two but in a row. Three, three in a row. Are they three in a row? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah. Yeah, three in a row, but two in, two in two that in last that round. Two in that last yeah. week, yeah. Which uh, surprised a few people, but... They haven't played each other for two years, by the way. Oh, no, sorry. Technically three seasons. They played oh, yeah, in that yeah, 2022 gotcha. season six. Got, yeah. But I think the Tigers have just gotten better. So Similar to the Hawks. They just keep getting better and better. Yeah. Cody Brennan's still got it. Their midfield just has depth everywhere. Yeah. You've got your Seer kicking goals. I think you... They can make a push in the finals if you see it can kick goals. If she can get yeah. it, got get a goal up. last yeah. week. If she can kick a few more goals, I think if their depth sort of players don't rely on Katie Brennan in their midfield, they yeah. can beat anyone. Yeah. I think you see <clears throat> really like found herself last week, mm. and I'll be really interested to see how much she's up and about um, yeah. this week against Melbourne. Um, I think this is going to be the game of the round. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. really agree, excited. Yeah, yeah. Um, for Melbourne, I think it's been great the last couple of weeks and I think it's been really instrumental is Alyssa Bannon being up and about again. You know how much I love her. She's one of the most exciting and one of the fastest yes. players in the competition. Awesome. I thought Zanka coming back last week was really good. She got two goals. So hopefully those two can sort of step up in the forward line um, and present some options. Um, Tyler Hanks as well. We've said it a couple of times this season. She's having an incredible season. And last week with McNamara and Purcell back in, Hanks was not having to carry the full load and yeah. was able to like get out and run her own game. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, and for Richmond, um, Grace Egan is Grace having, Egan's so good. Yeah, she's yeah. so good. Yeah, she's yeah. so underrated. Yeah. Um, and she's having a great season. Um, she's averaging like 20, 20 disposals per mm. game. Um, so I think I think a lot of Richmond players get uh, outshone by Mon, Mon Conti sometimes. Yeah. And we don't often talk about Ali McKenzie or Grace yeah. Egan or things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. But she's awesome. Are we just going to talk about Mon Conti versus Kate Hall head to head? Yeah, I, put, you, I left that one for you, mate. Yeah, I put that in there. Right. Yeah, we saw it. We saw it where she uh, went to Hatcher last week in the Adelaide game. Didn't help that you know Ebony Marinoff was there having eight million disposals. Didn't matter. They won. This yeah. is a really like for like sort of matchup. You got Purcell sort of back. Size Purcell's and... got a game under a belt back in as well. Yeah, this 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 game rules. I would have gone. It's in Cranbourne. <laughs> Still could go. I'm not. Mate, <laughs> I've worked in Cranbourne for eight months. I've just gotten over the PTSD. I ain't going back. Oh, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. I used to go to the Blue Light Disco in Cranbourne. Oh, there I you go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. You didn't go to the Blue Light Disco? <laughs> no. Oh, you, was, you never went to a Blue Light Disco? I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> have you gone through your life and never been to? A I go disco there all the time. Yeah, organised by the police. I am thirty three. <laughs> we had B and S balls in the country, and I still never. Oh, went to I one. know B those. Yeah. I never yeah. went to one. They were yeah. nice. I've been to a couple of those. Yeah, yeah. the Walker ones were good. <laughs> a bit sloppy. Anyway, uh, the big question: Are Melbourne back and pushing for a sneaky finals chance? So I know I will shout out the form of Alyssa Bannon as well. Thank you. Yes. That, yeah. Yes, we we did. Talk yeah, about that. I know, but it just I wanted to as well. You wanted yeah. to talk about has yeah. found form, pace yep. in the forward line, which is now actually helping Melbourne. Yeah, do yeah. you think their finals chance? I looked at their draw. I think it's going to be tough because I reckon they yeah. will lose. Their percentages kill them. Oh, no, Gab Kelvin with concussion either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think Melbourne are back, but they can't make finals because you know they cooked themselves early, mm. getting pumped by like sixty points by Brisbane. Just hurt. And Essendon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, that was a weird game. Yeah, that oh, that's that's that like, one. if you get pumped by 60 points to Essendon, you don't deserve to make finals. Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Thank you. Um. Yeah. No, <laughs> Melbourne are not making Richmond, finals. three goals. Three goals. Ooh. Richmond, 10 points. Yeah, I'm going 10 points as well. I think it'll be pretty close, but they'll get over the line. Across to Sullivan Logistics Stadium. Just, it just rolls off the tongue nicely. I was going to put in um, Perth Stadium, and then I was like, oh, people are going to confuse it with Optus Stadium. So we've gone the official name. That just rolls off the tongue so nicely. Anyway, <laughs> according to good friend of the show, Eliza Riley, the Derby. So yeah, we, we said, d d over yeah. there they say Derby, yeah. Yeah, she'd kill me. Uh, sh a shout out. They are on track to sell over 8,000 tickets. Wow. This goes for 8,000 tickets. There's already three to 3,500 tickets sold, and apparently 80% of the tickets sold are usually walk up. Great. So that's great. West Coast host a Fremantle. Freo won the last match between the two by eight points. Do you not think Daisy Pierce is going to be pumped up to try one attempt to ruin Freo's season, two to win her first derby? Mm -hmm. Pumped Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Can I say that? I'm going to say the big question right off the bat: Is this the biggest AFLW Western Derby ever? Yes, I think I think it is because you got Daisy's West, up and about. West Coast, West Coast have never been actually, good. West Coast haven't. I know last time was eight points, but West Coast have been good. Freo have been good. I think this is the biggest one we've had in the uh, history of AFLW. I will agree. Oh, okay. I'll let you have that cool, one. Cool, cool. Actually, just checking. Just checking yeah. if that was uh, that was fair. Anyway, uh, Fremantle. That will be coming into this game. This this is the one we have to win. Yeah. Off the back of last week, like last week, a bit of a slip. 
Yeah, they'll be really disappointed at that loss to Carlton. And also mm. with Hayley Miller, I think she's got a calf yeah. issue. Oh, and really? that's why they re- rested her. A calf or a foot in, I can't remember. Um, but they rested her the last game. And I think they'll be pretty devo that they did that, actually. So uh, hoping that she's going to be back in the side yep. this week. <laughs> and she's she's a game changer player. Absolutely. So um Big goals from midfield. Yeah, like, that's what you they'll, need. they'll if she can play, they will absolutely name her in the side. Um I had one of the same notes as you. Ella Roberts, let's oh. get her back in the midfield, please. We Daisy, talked about get it last her in week. there. It's yeah. Like be, she's their best player probably. The problem is Keep her in the midfield. Yeah, the ball hits the deck in the midfield. If they don't get first hands to it, they just leak inside. Yeah. I think it's because didn't she have a game from midfield where she kicked three goals a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, but yeah. did it in the first first quarter. But the fact that she was kicking, yeah, but the fact that she was kicking him from midfield, she yeah. can stay there because she can still have an impact on the scoreboard. Yeah. Her, her tank to work up and back in the yeah. ground is still good enough. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I would be throwing her in the midfield <clears throat> for a game like this too. Now we need to point out uh, Ainsley McCarthy and Roxy Roo play against their old time. Old uh, sides yeah, for the first still time. one of the best names in footy, Roxy yeah. Roo. Roxy Roo. That, yeah. that sounds like yeah. a, a character of some sort. Yeah. yeah. That's Western like, Turner's up there as is Paxi Paxman. I love I love Paxi. It's Paxi. Just, Paxi. Just, it's just such a punchy name. It yeah, is. it's great. Yeah. <laughs> I actually am looking forward to this one because it's a derby, but two, I think both teams are actually playing some half decent footy. Yep. Fremantle do struggle to generate when the ball gets into their opposition's <clears> defensive <throat> half. They sh- they struggle to generate forward movement. Mm-hmm. They are tap down go, tap down go. Yeah. They struggle to generate the movement from defense to mid to forward. <clears throat> and West Coast just like, oh yeah, you got the footy. Yeah, that's cool. We're just going to let you run through us. Yeah. So this could just be ping pong, just back and forth. This could be Hopefully. high scoring. Hopefully. Yeah, I, th- I think, yeah, Charlotte Thomas, another one being great at halfback that mm-hmm. we haven't talked about. I, th- I think this is going to be really close. They've had a lot of close derbies, even when, uh, or derbies, I keep, however they say it over there. Um, the derbies next week starts going. The derby, which one's that? Victoria derby. Oh, is racing, there... spring racing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. About that. I don't know yeah. about all that stuff. No, good stuff. Uh, but yeah, I reckon, I'm, are we going to do our tip shit? Go yeah. for it. I'm going to go Eagles by six. <laughs> I reckon this is another thing that Daisy can just put, put in her hat. Another uh, little thing that she can go. Yeah, I just want to. I just want a derby because if they won one, I don't think they've won one before. So, it'd be awesome if the Eagles can get over. You're the, line. the stats guy. I, yeah, I should have looked at that probably, but I genuinely think the Eagles could win this. They're going to bounce back. They were horrible last week. Daisy will just have something cooking up, a good tactic, and Freo have been a bit up and down. The pressure from the Eagles will get them over the line. That was yeah. Wow. I just realized I got a few big calls because I put in one big call and that's probably another one because most people will be tipping Freo here. I'm, I'm going Freo by twelve. Fair enough. By four. four. By four. Okay. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Close yeah. game. All right. Close game. Geelong, GMHBA Stadium, they host Brisbane. It is a rematch of last year's preliminary final. Yes. Geelong, uh, just they're, uh, the nicest way to say is they are bipolar. One day they're good, one day they're bad. Like they were really good, even though they lost. They were really good against yeah. the Tigers. It makes they are bipolar, yeah. No sense. Mm. Also, not making light of mental health. Anyone who's got some issues, please <laughs> seek out help and talk. People can talk to each other. It's fine. Correct. But it's honestly, the, the cats are Arthur and Martha. Yeah. And they really are. It's really weird. They're good. They're bad. They're good. They're bad. They didn't kick a goal against Carlton, and they played in the best AFLW game ever. <laughs> against, yeah, the Hawks, and then the Hawks, yeah. Richmond game was really good. And then they kicked five goals, 14, and won a game. And if they, they won, they, like you were saying last they week. They drew to they... North Melbourne. Oh, yeah. They're the only team to take points off North Melbourne this year. Yeah, what the what what is what it's is a real Geelong? roller coaster. It is. It's yeah. a real but all of, roller coaster. All of the ones we've said that they've played well, those three games, they didn't win any of them. So they need to, they so need to learn how to get over the line. Have, they have to play pathetic and win. No, I mean, <laughs> they just need to know how to finish off a game. Yeah, they, they do. They've had so many chances to win games, and yeah. they just don't know how to finish off. The Lions, after getting belted in round one, have gone, okay, enough of that. We're just going to start winning everything. Yeah, 100%. Seven straight wins. Dakota Davidson loss. has very much worked into the season. Ali Anderson is just getting possessions for fun. Soph Conway is... Sophie Conway's having the season yeah. of her career. Yeah, unbelievable. Can we just say? Mm. Ali Anderson, we expect that kind of stuff from. She is just elite. Sophie has always been good. Yep. Uh, but she's stepped she's up. done something different this season and she's really stepped mm. up. Great confidence. I just feel like Geelong, they're such a different team now to who they were in yeah. the prelims um, last year. Um both teams do um, transition good out of defensive 50. They can yeah. get that run on. Um, I just want to see Geelong um, finish it off. Maloney needs to step up, kick a little bit straighter um, and just give give Geelong, you know, a chance to stay in the game. Amy McDonald could come back as well for Geelong, which is uh, massive. Okay, yes. That could be huge. If she's back. Yeah, because that's 
like they have some good players in midfield, but she is just there, like She's, next level. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they they really need her. Is she yeah. a test? A test. Mm-hmm. Oh, you'd be pushing her to play this game. I know they right. they really need a win. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got you've got Bell Doors also is having a very good season for Brisbane as well. So they've they've got a spread of goal kickers, which is the concern. Stats guy, your favorite Brisbane player, Smith, just yeah, keeps Smith's kicking goals. Just keep kicking goals. Yeah. Like you can bank her in for two goals every game. There was a there's been a couple of games the commentators like. Oh, and she's uh, not kicked a goal this week. And then bang. goes bang, bang, two yeah. goals. Like she's yeah. just so consistent. Yeah. I love. And they've got Bree Conan as well, who's yeah. so solid down back. Her yeah. up against um, Maloney is going to be interesting. Yes. but I reckon I, Conan just knows how to shut him down. Yeah, always in the right spot. Yeah. Your big question says this: Can Brisbane finish on top with their easier finish to the season? I'm just going to just delete that. Can this top the Hawthorne Geelong game and be the best game we've ever seen? Ah, uh, in a stadium. Not windswept. Good weather predicted on Sunday. Um, yes. yes. Maybe. Can. Maybe. Because Geelong, both teams have the ability to kick a big score. They love. But Brisbane could also smash them. But they just love going end to end. Just yeah. Run, it, run and gun, run and carry. Good slick ball movement. Possibly. It's a big call. It's a, it's a big call. And that's We're doing why really we big calls. It. But I, I'm saying no, not the best game ever, but I think it'll be a fun game. Mm. Yeah. I think it'll be good. Um, I think Brisbane will come out on on, on top, though, I think yeah. they'll, they'll probably smash them. Um, I'm going to go Brisbane by 36. 36? Yeah. Oh, okay. Geelong, to be fair, I've had like a couple of good weeks and they're, they're due for their, their <laughs> drop-off for their, their, that they've been doing this the season. Little, the r- little downwards roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go Lions by 15. I think it can be reasonably Lions close. By 15? Yeah, like they didn't show that much last week, the Lions. And I think Geelong are better than their ladder position suggests. Like, Richmond are a good team. They probably should have beaten them last week. I think it would be close, but Lions will get over one. Brisbane by 24 in possibly 24. the highest scoring AFLW game ever. What's the highest scoring game? I'm Let's trying to find that as yeah. we go. Yeah, that's right. I found the highest scores ever. There's been a couple of 100 scored by teams, but I need to find the highest score in a, like by, in a game. So I'll try and find that's that. That's a big call. I yeah. love that one. Yeah. Yeah, We're getting okay. early with the big calls. We yeah. are getting early <laughs> yeah, with the big yeah. calls. All right, let's move on. Essendon and North Melbourne at Windy Hill. How have these two teams never played each other? Right? That's what I thought, yeah. Fascinating. I, I, had to, I looked, I double-checked, yeah, never played each other. This is you two. This is you two. Are we having a sandwich bet? What's the go well, here? Are you going to sang up? Yeah, maybe if you want, but that's not very fair on Essendon. What do you What do you eat? Um, what's your like go to? We like, usually ooh. have a bar me sort of bet. Oh, that's our, that's me. our go to. Oh yeah, you promised the bar me the bar me. Yeah, I owe you one. Yeah, yeah so. honestly. Oh, you can peek and give me my bar me when North win on the weekend. Then from I've me. already bought you one. Go <laughs> away, <laughs> stats guy. You're not stealing my bar me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. We can, yeah, we can talk about that. talk about the game. I'm, oh, trying I'm, to find I'm this very record. happy to talk about this game. Uh, Windy Hill. I'll I'll probably be there because around the corner from me. So I'll, I'll be down there. This will be good fun. I think it'll be a big crowd on Sunday, three o five. Uh. Yeah, older experienced players, I think, need a lift for the Bombers, as uh, Bryony has sort of said, down forward. You've got North, so many quick, agile players. Looking at the two Irish girls down forward, Vicky Wall and Neve Martin, have mm-hmm. just been kicking goals on their left and right every week. So mm-hmm. I've been really excited with them. Like, you've got the likes of Randall, Garner kicking goals, but even some of the lesser big names are just doing it all for North, and that's why their percentage is like skyrocketing over 300. So it's just awesome to be a North fan at the moment. North are just a solid team, aren't oh, they? There's so, so much depth. Ma- there's yeah. so much depth. Yeah. But there's so much like, yes, they've got their superstars and they mm. step up and there's room created for them. But then also those lesser known players, yeah. are, they're up there. Yeah. They're up there with the percentages. They're up there getting clearance. Like they're just so tight, so solid. Yeah. And I think they've really like – um really like come a lot closer together um this season. Yeah, this season I think feels... the loss, loss of last year. Yes. There's nothing like bitter disappointment <laughs> yeah. to bring people together and I think we actually has, are yeah. seeing that from North this year. Um Essendon's defense are going to need to step up. Mm. Um that's like that is the only way that they're going to be able to stop North from getting like absolutely slaughtering them. I think that's going to spend a lot of time um, in North's forward 50. And yes. I think the Bombers defense, which, which they have many times this season, have just been on constant, constant pressure. Um, we know that the Bombers do have uh, some players who can get up and run with the power and the speed and and that kind of stuff of, of North players. Yeah, absolutely. But the midfield. North has that extra gear um, and that extra depth and that extra support. Mm-hmm. I need Bannister and Scott for Essendon. They to need to play. keep three <laughs> goals between them, I reckon. Three or four, yeah. Yeah, I'd, li- yeah, yeah. I'd love at least two each. Two. I'd love, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, I'd love solid leads. 
take the marks and be, like be the people that you are supposed to be for, for yeah. Essendon and the potential that you have. It's um, it's amazing. Go and watch Ned Brockman <laughs> get some, on, on get his inspired. I like that. And go and get inspired. <laughs> I watched it last night almost How in tears. How is he not dead, that man? And oh him my God. talking he's gonna about. Need, he's going to need knee and hip replacements. I know. He's unbelievable. Okay, though. but we'll worry about that. He's only like 25 or something. Yeah. But we are capable of so much more than yep. our mind gives us credit for. Bannister and Scott, take a leaf out of Ned Brockman's book and go and bloody beat North Melbourne this week. The inspirational Brian is going to go into the rooms on, at Windy Hill and just yeah. just just go. All right, everyone, clear out. I've got something to say. Tune in next week for my keynote. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd, be, that'd be awesome. But in saying that, I don't, I don't want to be negative, but they just have no chance, really. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I. I <laughs> North and number what one. A limiting belief. <laughs> <laughs> that was, honestly, I could run through a brick wall after that speech, but I don't think they have a chance. You got North, the number one offense and the number one defense, just firing on all cylinders. This could be a bloodbath at yeah. Windy Hill, unfortunately for Bombers fans. <sighs> what do you reckon, Alex? North by seven goals. Seven. Yep. Oh, actually, I got I got North by six goals, so that's not that that bad. I've got North by six goals. Six six is a charity <laughs> yeah, six. Yeah. six. <laughs> Very nice. Anyway, as we move on, is it the final game of the season? <laughs> he didn't just, want to talk. We did talk about it. Yeah, right? I let you two go. Chelsea, just take, like, I don't need to butt in. North, That's true. North That's Melbourne, true. good. Essendon, not as good. Yeah. yeah. Essendon have been pretty good. Won three straight, but it's a very tough ask. You can North. stop now. Yeah. You yeah. Can yeah. Stop Shut now. up, Scott. <laughs> I'm happy to talk about North. Yeah. Any, any day of the week. Victoria Park, 5 or 5 p.m. Get down. This will be good. Vibes. Collingwood host the Adelaide Crows. Adelaide won this last meeting by 12 points. You might add, add an extra one if Adelaide decide to put their foot to it this week. Mm. I think they're back. They got the shock of their lives when they lost to Melbourne after playing gross football after the even gross game against St Kilda where they fell over the line and went, okay, hi GWS, sorry, have you ever seen a murder of a giant? Yes, <laughs> a murder once. of a giant. <laughs> that time. <laughs> I don't mind that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ebony Marinoff going for a perfect uh, 33 for 33 as far as votes in the uh, AFLW. Well, I don't Ferris. know about that, but maybe. Saying she's on 24 for 24 at the moment. I'm just going to will this into existence. Okay, no, you go. <laughs> that would be unbelievable. Going up against this Collingwood team who I've been nice to them this year because they've had the injury year from hell. Yeah. They've shown improvement. Yep. They've gotten better with Ruby now getting in the midfield now that she's got her <sighs> tank up and going. She's been really good. How good is watching Ruby Slasher in oh, Collingwood at the moment? So good. Like, her and Sarah Hi, Ruby, Rowe. you're fit. Here's Anne Hutchard and Ebony, Ebony Marinoff. Woo! Good luck. <laughs> That'll yeah. be tough. But that's the. Th I know it's been really good watching. Uh, yeah, Ruby in midfield. But you're taking her ability off half back, and then they've lost like the skills off half back. So it's like all these other players. I think there was a couple of forwards that have had to go midfield because their injuries as well. Yeah. You're taking their good forwards and their good backs, putting them in the midfield, and then yep. their forwards and backs aren't aren't going too what well. What would either. you have them do, Liam? I no, I agree with what they're doing. I think yeah. it's just they are a bit hamstrung yeah. with injuries. Like like you have to put Ruby in there because she could play almost anywhere. She's an yeah, absolute she game absolutely slasher. Can. But but. Yeah, you, then you lose that sort of depth in the back line, which is a bit of a worry. Yeah. I think. yeah. I think Adelaide will absolutely step up and demolish Collingwood. Mm. Um, I do like seeing Collingwood's improvement, as you yeah. said. It's It's been really good to watch, but I think just what's better to watch is Eb Marinoff oh. and the season that she is having. It's so exciting it's, to it's watch. Unstoppable. You know, we have favourite players that we love to watch and we're like, yeah, go watch Griggs, go do this, blah, blah, blah. But Eb Marinoff is in a class of her own. Does everything. And yeah. and it's just beautiful to watch. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. And then you've also got, you know, Ponter and Stevie Lee Thompson around her doing a bunch mm -hmm. of work too. Yeah. Hatchard just cruising around going, this is great. <laughs> I don't have as much pressure on me having a good time. Um, and uh, I've forgotten her last night. I've just completely spaced on it. The uh, She's a twin sister. She plays on the wing. Got a ton of speed. Has shoulder strap. Um, I've Newman. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah no, I've no. just had a mini so strike. Right, yeah. yeah. But no, she's like... Outlet footy to her on the wings, which these wings get very wide at Victoria Park. It is a very wide dominate. ground. Yeah, it is a very Just wide ground. Yeah. Swing the switch and off the crows go into the forward line. Yep. Different different sides yeah. of attacking line. Yeah. Oh, Collingwood could be in for a long day. Benici, Can, and Davey might have to really, really step up. Yeah. 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 It's <laughs> good it's, luck. It's going to be a tough one for them, isn't it? Yeah. But the Colling oh, the thing, as well. The her. thing about Collingwood is that they always can really bring intensity. Yeah. And I think they will bring that yeah. tackling pressure like straight out of the gate and they'll try and like rattle Adelaide. Um, out Maybe of the first gate. half. Yeah, 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 well, that's the thing. They end up really cooked because mm. they've got an inexperienced side, yeah. the, you know, injuries and stuff. But, uh, yeah, it's it's Adelaide 
by I'm going to go 40 points. Ooh. So the big question following on that, because oh, you're, you're a noted hater, is are Adelaide out of their slump? <laughs> Well, no, you've been hating. I don't know if they're out of their slump, but they're lucky that they got to play the Giants last week and then Collingwood this week. Because if they were playing a tougher team, they could lose. I think that Sunday showed that in the couple of days that they had, they wouldn't have been training. It's like, okay, you girls are fit. You know what to do, what you're doing. Let's sit down and figure out what what has been going wrong and work on that. Mm -hmm. I think they worked on that. And this is a scary sign for Collingwood. 67 points. 67. 67. Ooh, they, they, yeah. What did they win by last week? By like 70 so, yeah. or 60, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't hate on Adelaide. I've never not picked them. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I've just in a bit of a slump. Them, just a bit of a slump, yeah. A little slumpy. I, I agree. I still think, uh, yeah, I think Collingwood could bring the pressure in the first half, so I'm going to go Crows by 30. I don't think it's going to be a okay. slump, like a huge smashing. Yeah. Interesting. Big call for the weekend ahead. Stats man, you can go first. Well, I had a few. I could have said the Eagles because I forgot how big of a call that would have been. But the Suns get a win on the board against the Swans and avoid the wooden spoon this year. They ha- they can get another win. And uh, because they've got the draw, it actually helps them get off the off the bottom of the ladder. So I think the Suns are going to avoid the wooden so spoon. So you're saying Collingwood gets the wooden spoon? Yep. Collingwood okay. gets the wooden spoon. They don't win Oof. a game for the rest of the year, Oof. which would be sad because they've had so many injuries. But yeah. I genuinely think that yeah, the Suns will get off the bottom of the ladder. Wow. Go yeah. on. <laughs> I haven't even mentioned it, so it's going to come as a surprise. Ooh. Monconti yep. is going to get a career best What's disposal. What's a career best? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like, let's Push without notice. Uh, uh, like, like over 40. She, okay. She'll be she'll be up around yeah, the, the that, top. She'll be like a 39, like 40. Um, yeah, against Melbourne. I reckon she'll step up. The Richmond don't have a great history against Melbourne, and this is a time where they have a chance to beat them, and yep. I reckon Mon will see that. We all know how I feel about Mon Conti, and I think that she will absolutely step up and demolish them. Okay, I like, I like it. I'm trying to find it. I can't really find it. I've got <laughs> totals. I've got. I've got this. I got game highs. Uh, game high disposal looks to be 35. Oh, great. 40 does the job then. Yeah. 40 yeah. done. Yeah. Thanks, Mon. <laughs> or you can get 36. 36. Yeah. So, if Brisbane and Haw- and uh, Geelong is over 150 points by what I've searched without any specific no, thing saying right, it's yeah. the highest, because it was 140 between Geelong and Hawthorne earlier this year, highest growing AFLW game ever. That Sun, is a big call, yeah. GMHBA Stadium between And that would be very Geelong fun to watch. Brisbane. I hope that happens. I don't mind that, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's like quite if, good. If we can get like a 75 to 80, I'm just like, beautiful footy. Yeah. If we had a stoppage clock, yeah, it would definitely happen. Yeah, right? 100%. Yeah. Nice. Keep an eye on. What are we keeping an eye on? Well, we're keeping an eye on Swans and Gold Coast because basically we're trying to not get the Suns the wooden spoon or can the Swans win a third game. Keep an eye on Melbourne and Richmond because Ooh, yeah, if that's Melbourne, the one. Melbourne win this game, they're back on Keep an eye on the Crows coming out and going, hey. Can hey, we smash them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can Essendon show something against North? Possibly. Port Adelaide and St Kilda, finals hopes on the line. Can Daisy, yeah, get West Daisy Coast in the Dar- derby. derby win? Basically just watch yeah. footy. Yeah. Can the Western Bulldogs be fun? Probably not. Wow. Will they come out attacking? Yeah, that's, that's the, that is a big question. <laughs> that's a lot to keep an eye on. Yeah. But, all <laughs> you know what? but we will be keeping you an eye on all that. Just watch the footy. Yeah. Footy. <laughs> do what I do what I'm doing on Saturday. I'll have three screens rolling on Saturday. Footy races. Wow. Uh, yeah, footy. Like two, probably the some footy, wrestling the races. of some sort that no, you no, always No want. wrestling this weekend. <laughs> I don't think. No, there's nothing on this weekend. That was last weekend. Daniel, <laughs> Brian Danielson's last ever match. I'm still sad about it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that'll do us for AFLW Safe. Oh, well, today, big thank you to Tanya Kennedy from the Sydney Swans yes. for jumping on. Thanks to Brani for... Missing the interview once again. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Next time. Sorry. Yeah. Next time. Got some interviews to do tonight. Yeah, yeah you I do. do. Plenty Absolutely. of work. So check out Fox Footy. Shout out. We'll see what jacket you're wearing as well. That's going to be good fun. Uh, <laughs> hopefully you're in a jacket. It's warm. It's meant to storm later. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. What's with games that you're on that <laughs> storms? Yeah, it is supposed to be storm. It's the first is, half of the season. I got a, I got all the good yeah. matches. I was like, this is good. <laughs> I figured it out. Bad vibes. That's oh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Always good vibes. Thank you. Uh, remember to smash a like across all the social seas, doing fun stuff across the footy season, filling in those gaps. Again, check out the YouTube video right now where you can see AFLW All Stars kicking snags, having a good time with myself and Stats Guy. A bunch of fun. Hope, hopefully, we can do that again next season. And a big thank you to ASICS as well and all the athletes for joining in. That'll be cut up and thrown across all of our social media platforms throughout the coming weeks. So that is TikTok, Instagram, X, and Facebook. AFLW Today, AFLW Today, AU on X. And of course, shout out to our other shows, the AFL Today Men's Show. We have one more show left for the season. 
Uh, the boys are going to do a draft show because, well, their teams have high draft picks. I wouldn't know about that because my team's good. Uh, <laughs> cricket today. Cricket season about to get up and running against yes. us. Guy, football today, APL season in full swing. NBA Australia's NBA is about to start. NFL, we're into about week six or seven. And hold on tickets if you like horse racing. It is Caulfield Cup and Everest week this week. Of course, next week we have the Cox Plate. Following week, it's Cup week. We are flat out busy. Anyway, get around all of them. Like me not getting around nerve pain at the moment. Not good. Mm, that doesn't sound fun. <laughs> A- anyway, we'll catch you next week. And just remember, footy's back. It's back. It's back.